then Robert Stodel decided to start the first one-stop gardening retail center in South Africa, it revolutionized the industry. At this stage, most nurseries were farm-like operations with muddy footpaths, where dedicated horticulturists came searching hopefully for an extinct plant lurking in some dark corner. They were humble beginnings. Fifty years ago, Robert Stodel had a scooter and an idea. Shrugging off warning about barren business prospects, a youthful Mr. Stodel resigned from his day job to venture into the tightly traded nursery industry. The idea was to bring gardening to every household at prices they could afford. The method? Complete one-stop self-service nurseries and garden centers which would change the image of nurseries. As with many successful businesses, Stodel's nurseries had very humble beginnings. Rob Stodel started by selling flower bulbs from door to door on his bicycle to housewives and says he survived on a couple of apples and a pint of milk a day. Fifty years ago, it was only a vision and a passion. And he was driving around, around Bergfried, Bendoridge, Deep River. And in the corner of Main Road and Bergfried Road, we were living there. And then he saw a van, breeze and bulb importers. So he thought, gee, that must be Dutch people. So he popped in, in the store, and met my late husband. He said, I'm Robbie Stodel, he was sick, yeah. Robbie Stodel, and I like to work for you because I'm very bored. Although Robert Stodel was working for the Kramers, his entrepreneurial spirit soon took over and he started his own flower bell business. At that stage, yes, there was no money. However, I'm very grateful that we have been able to achieve with our team within the company to bring plants and cleaning and gardening to the general public at affordable prices. They say success is just another name for hard work, and Robert Stodel not only had a vision, but worked long hours to achieve his dream. He stayed for a while, and one evening, I was in the kitchen, and I saw light in our store. And I said to my husband, why is the light? You forgot to put the light out. He said, no. So I said, but have a look. There is light in the store. So he went to the store, and who was working there? Robbie Stodel. And we have to chase him home by 11 o'clock. Still burning light, we said, Rob, go home. As the largest group of nurseries in South Africa, very many suppliers, growers and retailers and wholesalers approached us and requested us if we could sell their products. Yes, we negotiated hard and long for lower prices, which, as it was our objective to sell products to the gardening public at lower prices, we were able to pass on to the general public. It only but shows that true vision and passion will overcome all obstacles. Many people have asked me why they had to start a garden center instead of any other business. In Holland, I worked during my school holidays as an child of 14, 15 or 16 at the flower bulb fields in the carnation hothouses and when I came to South Africa at the age of 17 with my Dutch accent everybody was convinced that I knew everything about gardening. Many people asked me what must I do next. I realized because I had a passion for gardening 
and for the nursery industry that this is the industry in which I must go. I had set out to change the nursery industry and therefore not only sell plants but everything for the garden. I think after 50 years we have therefore succeeded. Soon, Rob Stodel became the biggest flower bulb retailer in South Africa, buying and selling, amongst others, 17% of the total crop of anemones which were grown throughout the world. When I started the business, I first of all took addresses out of the telephone directory and, as we called it these days, roniot them off on a black and white sheet of paper, which soon became five pieces of paper, soon increased to full color catalogs, and then we achieved to send out 36,000 or 360,000 catalogs twice a year all over the country. We imported special ink from Switzerland, which gave a smell while paging through the catalog of Dutch Hisense, enticing the customer to buy even more. The success was obvious. His phenomenal success in the mail order business attracted the positive attention of the Consumer Council, and it is a tribute to Stodel's perpetual search for customer satisfaction that in the early 60s the director of the Consumer Council requested him to assist in starting and heading up the National Direct Mail Organization, tasked with eliminating dishonest trading from the industry. The result was the formation of the South African Mail Order Association, of which he was the chairman for 15 years. He also had regular interaction with the newspapers, consumer organizations, the Housewives League and the Trade Practices Advisory Committee, so that complaints from consumers dropped by 80% in the mail order trade. Let's go for a walk in Stodel's nursery, roses and lilies and lemon thyme, water cascades in an evergreen garden. Hibiscus and conifers all in a rhyme We will romance in a savory of summer In landscapes of love for the very first time Stodel's Nurserymen, the professionals who care With quality, service and price Robert's success and his unfailing belief in the concept of a one-stop self-service garden centre resulted in the opening of Kenilworth Nursery in 1968. By then, customers had started demanding not only flower bulbs, but also associated products. So in true entrepreneurial style, he gave it to them. It was here that he proved his theory correct, that gardening products could be offered at discounted prices and that nurseries could become fully-fledged garden centres. It was at this stage that he positioned Stodel's nurseries as places which offered the best quality at the lowest possible price sold by motivated and qualified staff. So much has changed, and yet so much has stayed the same. This concept was totally new in the horticultural field and was queried by other nurserymen. However, Raymond Ackerman, who started Pick and Pay, said to Rob Stodel at the time, If I can do it with fresh vegetable, you can do it with plants. By this time, when we opened the doors to retail flower bulbs, uh, we started to advertise not only through mail order, but also in the local newspapers. The result was that we opened our doors seven days a week, and were extremely surprised how uh, excited the customers had become and that the customers were anxious to be able to buy flower bulbs direct from us, from Kenilworth. The result was that we had a, lots of queues every day and we learned a lot, we made very many mistakes. However, it was a very exciting period and suddenly I realized that I was 
on the right track to bring gardening to each and every person in the Cape. And therefore, I realized that my vision was going to be a tremendous success. The success of the Kenilworth Garden Centre and the development of the northern suburbs as a residential area led to the opening of Stodal's in Belleville in 1973. It enjoyed immediate success and is the flagship garden centre today. Stodal's was well known for being a bit of a rebel with supplies and growers of plants, always looking for better quality and cheaper prices for his customers. They say money does not grow on trees, but the combination of deep and astute entrepreneurial skills and green fingers allowed Stodal's to flourish. His business acumen paid off, and a small bulb selling operation had blossomed into a multi-million rand industry and the biggest garden centre in South Africa. He says, If I had listened to the people who told me there was no market for garden centres in Cape Town, my life would have been totally different. In August 1985, what at first appeared to be a disaster turned out to be a blessing for Stodal's garden centres. A fire destroyed the Belleville nursery and Robert Stodal stood and watched as his life and business went up in flames. As I stood there and looked at the building, I realised that this is perhaps the golden opportunity to rebuild a branch which I had envisaged with the knowledge I'd had for the last 20 years while we had been running the garden centers. We had many people standing in the streets looking at this fire and I realized that normally we have to spend a lot of money advertising getting these people into our branches and into the branch. When the fire engines moved out and the gates were opened, we quickly put the shade netting around the building, the people poured in, and we started to straight away sell red hot sales bargains. People bought plants in the next few months like they have never bought before. It was therefore the most successful season of the year up to that stage. In the 1980s, Stodals took another massive step forward. A management consultant was appointed, resulting in the company introducing computerized management systems for stock control. The Farmers Weekly said at the time of the computerization, The goal of Robert Stodal, one of the best known nurserymen in the country, is to reduce the cost of gardening, and he uses computers and modern sales techniques to achieve this ambition. Even though computerization at that stage was very much in the beginning shoes or stage, as you would say, I was fortunate to have my eldest brother, Han, being interested and in working with computers. He and I discussed that the expansion of business depended upon computerization. It was he who assisted me to introduce a computer system which at that stage was run by IBM on the big machines and the result was that we were able to be the first company to have a extensive computer system in mail order and later on in the garden centers. Fortunately our son Nick has got a passion for computers and is able to run and expand the company 
extensively with the new and uh, good computer systems he has introduced. And although we are expanding now, there was a time when we had seven branches, which without proper computerization at that stage was very difficult to manage, especially if you have got the philosophy in search of excellence. We realized that we could not give the service which the customer deserves. And therefore, we cut back to three branches at that stage and later two branches to be able to fulfill my wish of being able to give the best service to customers and to continuously search for excellence. How does Jo manage to have such a beautiful garden? I must ask her. Stodel's nurseries, of course. Stodels are the professionals who care. All bulbs, plants, seedlings, tools and garden equipment come from Stodel's nurseries. All real savers and fully guaranteed. I must remember Stodel's nurseries for real savings and guaranteed quality. Stodel's products grow on you. Through the years, the philosophy of Stodel's nurseries has remained firmly entrenched in all aspects of the business. From the beginning, Robert Stodel believed that customers should have the right to receive value for money and any dissatisfaction should be reported directly to the manager to enable them to improve wherever they could. He says, It is one thing to believe that the customer is right. It is, however, only through example that the customer realizes that he is right. Too many businesses which believe and preach this policy do not practice it. To prove his belief in the quality of his products, Stodel's was the first garden centre to offer a guarantee on all plants sold, something that was met with scepticism in the industry. They still offer guarantees today. It was the right choice and still is. We decided to guarantee our products, as not only did we know that we were buying and growing the best products in South Africa, but we believed that these products would do well in every garden in South Africa and therefore kept on at that stage. We guaranteed, started to guarantee somewhere in the early 70s. And every gardener and nurserymen in South Africa thought we were mad. Today still, we are proud of the fact that we are one of the few nurseries who guarantees their plants, flower bulbs, seeds and many other products. When a customer comes in and is not happy with the product, we replace or refund um, their money. Well, again, we know that we have searched for excellence. The professional nurserymen who care. It's always been Stodel's slogan, which is why throughout his business career, Stodel's has been a forerunner in the preservation of our precious environment. He believes strongly in the words of Cecil John Rhodes that whoever has the foresight to plant trees is creating a monument to himself and provides capital for his successes, while the gain for posterity is incalculable. The greatest reward for Robert Stodel has been the emergence of patches of green in previous desolate areas in Greater Cape Town. Robert Stodel did not limit himself to local projects, but involved all sectors of the population. He gave away around 400,000 trees over 20 years to the public. When you take into consideration that one tree provides oxygen for a family of four for a lifetime, there are 1.6 million people breathing easier because of him. Stodel's social commitment encompassed creating peace gardens and handing out more than 380,000 trees to the youth of Cape Town. During Arbor Day in 1993, Rob Stodel visited a number of daycare centres, creches, orphanages and settlements in Athlone, Kailicha and Lange to hand over trees to the underprivileged communities. Another highlight which I remember well was the fact that we planted trees and did gardening competitions with 
the then mayor of Cape Town, Gordon Oliver, in areas like Kailicha. It was exciting to go there for year after year and to hand out prizes to the best gardens in those areas. It was part of my vision and therefore my uh, ambition to create greener places within places like the Cape Flats. And the beautiful vegetables and flower gardens were highlights to me as this had proven to me that we had once again succeeded. It was my ambition and vision to create greener areas in these barren, sandy areas. It was therefore an exciting time to see beautiful gardens and vegetable gardens in such barren areas. And we realized we had achieved our ambition and vision to green the Cape. The concept of cleaning Cape Town fitted well in with the philosophies of the company. And when Arbor Day was introduced in South Africa, which came over from America, we realized that this was the ideal opportunity for us. Very many nurseries did not do anything about this and offer trees on Arbor Day to the general public. We turned around and handed trees to journalists of newspapers, radio announcers, who in turn would say thanks for the tree we are going to plant on Arbor Day. Soon Arbor Day became more well known and radio stations approached us and we handed with radio stations thousands of trees out in the center of Cape Town with the roving microphones as well as in places like Mitchell's Plain. When the Queen of England turned 21 and happened to visit Cape Town, she was asked to plant a tree in the gardens of Cape Town. Many years later, I thought about this and when Kader Asma, the Minister of Environment, came to me and suggested, together with Archbishop Tutu, to start a peace garden here in Cape Town, I realized this is the opportunity to involve dignitaries from all over the world and therefore get exposure for the concept of greening the Cape and greening South Africa. As I was at the board of the Fairest Cape Association, as well <coughs> as on the board of the South African Botanical Society and therefore Kirsten Bosch, I was in the ideal position to encourage the planting of trees against Table Mountain and very many other places. Arbor Day has become a tremendous success. Everybody throughout South Africa plants trees. It's however very interesting that when the Queen was planted her first tree when she was 21, now at least 60 or 70 years later, when she was well in her 80s, she planted a cane, a tree with us in Kalicha and again helped us to fulfill our aim to green the Cape. Robert Stodel was approached by the government to organize and participate in many symbolic tree planting ceremonies with heads of state and dignitaries both local and international.
One of the biggest projects undertaken by Stodal's nurseries was in partnership with the new government in 1994. A massive tree planting on the Grand Parade called Trees for Peace took place with all the head boys and girls from schools across the Western Cape. Many of the MPs were there to celebrate the new South Africa and thousands of trees were handed out to the public. A 7 metre tree was planted on the parade by F.W. de Klerk as a symbol of peace in the new South Africa. The ceremony was presided over by Vice President F.W. de Klerk, Professor Kada Asmal and Governor Mbeki, who planted the tree of peace together with Robert Stodel. This was a terribly exciting time. The Minister of Environment approached us and asked us to plant a tree in the centre of Cape Town, a big tree, in the centre of Cape Town, and attract as many as possible people to celebrate the free new democracy, the free country, and therefore Peace Day. The Peace Day uh, attracted thousands of people, and uh, uh, dignitaries like President Mandela, the cleric, Government Becky and very many other ministers were invited. As the Minister of Environment had requested us to plant this tree, the mayor of Cape Town was involved, the town planner was involved. They, in that case, offered a nine meter tree to be moved from the District 6 area to the center of Cape Town with a 20 ton truck. It was an exciting period as all staff, everybody, in Cape Town, as well as from our company, we were involved for several weeks, if not months, to prepare this a stage, which helped up to four, five hundred people. When we arrived on the parade and we saw the whole which had dark, I thought they were going towards Australia, and several people were busy digging this hole, which was an extraordinarily big hole. However, for such a big tree, I realized we needed such a big hole. Rene Skibi reports that Arbor Day and Peace Day celebrations were combined at many of the ceremonies. Say in your holy book, one of the biggest Peace and Arbor Day events was held on Cape Town's Grand Parade. Deputy President F.W. de Klerk, Water Affairs and Forestry Minister Kada Asmal and other dignitaries symbolically planted a seven-metre wild fig tree in the name of peace. They called on South Africans to plant trees in order to enhance and preserve the environment. Mr. de Klerk said many symbolic trees still needed to be planted in this country. Symbolic trees in the sense of a successful RDP, houses, clinics, better education, economic growth. Those are also trees which will provide shade for the people of South Africa. There were also peace prayers and musical messages of peace from local musicians. 300 trees were given to representatives of Western Cape schools and a thousand trees were handed out to members of the public. Ironically, some said they were prepared to fight to get their hands on a peace tree. But the general feeling around here is that the first peace and Arbor Day in a free South Africa was one of reconciliation and celebration. Rene Skibi on the Grand Parade for TV1 News. Although we worked with many queens, kings, presidents and dignitaries from all over the world, it wasn't just for the sake of planting trees with them. We realized by planting trees with dignitaries, we were going to get a lot of exposure that we had hoped and we did. Therefore, the general public throughout South Africa were exposed to planting trees and therefore promote 
the ideal we had is that was to clean South Africa. Apart from donating and planting trees, Stodels has also trained people to become skilled gardeners. He partnered with men on the side of the road, taking unemployed people into the garden centre and putting them through a mini horticultural course. The reason we trained gardeners is because we saw the need that there were very many people who needed training in pruning, fertilising, weeding and all the other general garden jobs. We realised by training these people we would help to contribute towards the uh, job opportunities for such people and are proud of the fact that we have by now trained thousands of gardeners here in Cape Town alone. It is unsurprising that Robert Stodel has received numerous awards and accolades from government, private enterprise, dignitaries and organisations for his contribution to greening the environment as well as for his entrepreneurial skills. gratefully received. It was in recognition for a lot of hard work and our team at Stardles assisted us and worked hard for these awards. However, the biggest reward was the fact that we had been able to contribute towards the greening of South Africa and achieved to bring gardening to the general public at affordable prices and therefore our mission and vision and ambition which I had originally had been achieved. While Stodels was contributing to the greening of the Western Cape, the business was growing rapidly and had a reputation for being one of the best nurseries in South Africa. In 2007, Robert Stodel handed the company over to his son, 
who has taken the philosophies of the professional nurserymen who care and selling the best quality at the lowest possible price further. Nick too would like to bring gardening into every home. Now, after 50 years, I definitely feel it's time for me to step down, to hand over to new energetic ideas, new technology and young energetic people like Nick. I was very fortunate, or we as a company are very fortunate, to have a person like Nick who is ambitious and keen and knowledgeable as I could not have definitely found a better person in South Africa as, strangely enough, my own son. It is a fitting tribute that Nick Stodel, as president of the South African Nurserymen's Association, presented his father, Robert, with the President's Award. The award is handed out to that person who has offered the most support to the president during his term in office. Nick Stodel says, during my term as president, I was very lucky to have one particular person support me, allowing me to get on with my SANA work, knowing that he would step in when I needed help with Stodels. Without his support and guidance, it would not have been possible for me to have the honour to stand as president of SANA. In fact, there are very few opportunities in life that I recognise I would not have had if it were not for his hard work and sacrifice. For that reason... This year, please indulge me in allowing me to give the President's Award to my father, Robert Stodel. Today, Nick is rapidly expanding, based upon the company's four philosophies. In search of excellence, the best customer service in South Africa, respect for the individual, and development of staff. Behind every successful man is a supportive family, and his wife Rose and sons Nick and Mark were no exception. Considering that we were a business, or are a business, which is open seven days a week, we worked very hard. However, I could never have achieved the success with any company without the support of Rosemary, my wife, who continuously had to sit over weekends by herself while I worked, or evenings while I came home late evenings. Mark, my son, considered going into the business or becoming a medical doctor. Rosemary, being a sister tutor, swayed him to become a medical doctor. He is very blessed in that what he is doing and has supported the same like Nick for very many years for me to succeed. So to both Nick and Mark, I'm very grateful for the times that I was able to work while they had to entertain themselves. And of course, finally, Rosemary for the support for all these years that she had to sit by herself. Thank you.